For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to create this video to show you uh, some of the steps necessary to insert a table of contents. So the first thing you need to do is download your document from Google Drive to Microsoft Word as I've done here. And then you're going to need to insert a table of contents or a blank page after abstract and before your introduction. Remember your introduction, you're going to include the title. So the very first heading, a level one heading, will be the title of your page. I'm sorry, the title of your paper. And that will be the title that you have on your title page. So you'll just copy and paste what you have here on your title page to the first level one heading, which is right before the introduction. After the introduction, with no page break, you'll continue with the first main subsection as a level two heading. So no page break. There is a page break before the introduction here so that the abstract is on a separate page. So you have the title page which is on its own page, obviously, and then abstract, which is on its own page. Then you begin with the introduction. After the introduction, there are no page breaks until the reference list at the very end. And remember that the appendix each should be on a separate page. So you'll need a page break before each of your appendix at the end. So to insert a table of contents, we're going to go to after the abstract, and we're going to do a page, I'm sorry, insert page break. So now we have a blank line. And at the top of this page, we will create a heading, table of contents, and we'll have to probably go back and change the font by default. Uh, it does not use Times New Roman. So we'll go ahead and make that change. Now, before we insert our table of contents, this is going to be uh, a way of automatically generating your table of contents. But to do that, you need to do a couple of things. So the first thing here is to find your first heading, select it, and go into Styles. Now, I'm on a Mac. Uh, the process is going to be very similar to Microsoft Word, but you're going to have to go into Styles and actually first modify level the headings 1, 2, and perhaps uh, heading 3. So all of you should be using a level 1, a level 2, and perhaps a level 3 headings in your paper. So uh, we're going to use these headings, and we're going to have to modify each of these accordingly. So we're going to have to change the font to Times New Roman, bold, it's font size 12, and it's going to be centered to the page. And the last thing we'll need to do is go to Format Paragraph and make sure that there's no space before and after and that we are having that we have double space and okay and that should do it so let's see here okay so this uh, this is what it should look like so now it should basically it should basically look uh, the same as what you had before the only difference now is that you are using a different font style in this case a heading one and that's, uh, that makes all the difference because the way that the table of contents is generated automatically, it looks for these different uh, headings. So if you don't change these styles and just use a regular normal style, text style, then it won't work. So really the trick here is to go to every heading and make sure first you adjust the heading. So level two heading is going to be the next style that we're going to work with. So we're going to modify the style. Again, we're going to change it to Times New Roman, font size 12. Now this is going to be left justified because this is a level two heading according to APA. But we're still going to have to format the paragraph to make sure there's no space before or after the paragraph. And we have double space. And we hit OK, and there it is. So notice it, it looks the same, or it should look the same. But it's now a level 2 heading. And you can see this by clicking on the actual heading itself, and it should tell you what format you're using. So let's go to the next heading. And we're going to basically have to go through the entire document in this fashion, determining whether it's a level 1, level 2, or level 3 heading. All of you are going to have a level one, a level two heading, or heading one, a heading two. Uh, some of you will have a heading three. So once we've made the change or modified uh, the style, we just have to do that one time. And now it's just a matter of selecting 
the uh, the style. So we're going to do this for all of our headings. In this case, this is another level two heading. So again, notice up here, current style of selected text. So notice here, the text is normal. And notice here, when I click on this heading, it changes to heading two. This is how it should appear. Make sure that all of your text is black font. And notice how this is kind of grayed out. So the easiest way to do this is to select all of your text and make sure that you go up here under color and select uh, the, the uh, black color so that uh, all your text is black. So we're moving right along here. Now method is going to be a level one heading. Participants is going to be a level two heading. So it's as long as you have made those edits first that modified the style at the very beginning, you do that once and then it's simply just going through and um, selecting that and choosing the appropriate style. Notice that in Microsoft Word it selects where you don't have enough space or maybe you have too much space. So pay close attention when you do bring it over to Word that you find any instances where you see either red or green squiggly lines underneath the text that you make those appropriate changes. So we continue on selecting our headings and we continue on. Now results and discussion is going to be a level one heading and notice how that moved it over to where it should be and this is a level two heading. Okay, and moving right along, level two heading. And there's another level two heading. Now, references will continue with the same. Same process here, selecting each of these uh, styles. Now remember that all headings, especially when it's a page break, make sure that you begin at the very top of the page. Notice how this appendix is down about four, three or four lines. You want to get up to the very first line and simply just delete and bring this text up to the very top. And let's go to the next. There's another appendix, level one. Level one and level one. Okay, now we go up to our table of contents and notice that the table of contents, well, we haven't inserted it yet, but if we had it before, it will not reflect the changes automatically. There's a process there. So let me first show you how to insert. Go to insert and index and tables and you're going to select um, I would keep it fairly simple okay either classic or modern and in fact I would probably keep it classic just as it shows up here now there's something funny here if you notice that this looks like this is a level 2 heading where it probably should be a level 1 now uh, we're going to make a do something a little bit different here. So this is going to be should be level one. So I just did that. Now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click update. And you have two options. You can update the page numbers only or update the entire table. I'm going to update the entire table. And notice now uh, this was corrected. So I had made a mistake in the style that I had selected this first heading. Now the first the first um, heading here is actually the title and we're going to make one slight modification to this table of contents. And that's going to be We're going to type here, we're going to replace the text, and we're going to call this Literature Review, even though the title is not going to say Literature Review.
<clears throat> okay, I would call it literature review. It, you might also call it theoretical framework. Um, but the subheadings will be correct. Everything else will represent exactly the title that you have here. Um, and so here, this would be the only change that I would make. Now I'm noticing here that um, the text is actually uh, not Times New Roman, so I'm just going to experiment here and see if we can get this changed over to Times New Roman without having a major problem on our hands. And yes, we can do that. So. Um, this should this should work. So basically, basically, it looks like that. If you make any subsequent changes, then this you can update this automatically. And again, when you update, you have the option of just updating the page number. So if you if you if you kept the same headings and didn't make any changes to the headings, all you would need to do is update this, uh, update the page numbers. But if you started inserting headings or even changed anything to any of the headings then you would then you would need to update the entire table and uh, just double check your font I thought I had changed this but I didn't make sure everything is Times New Roman and uh, it should basically look like uh, this and this will take you automatically uh, clicking on here this will take the reader auto automatically to the page okay so this is an easy way a couple of steps involved here but once you have it set up uh, it's a nice way to I keep or maintain the table of contents, especially when you're still in the process of making changes. At this point, most of you have finished, but it's good to know that this is possible and this is how you do it. So the first step, go into styles, make those changes. Remember to change not only the font, but also the spacing as far as the justification left or, or center to the page and go into format paragraphs. This should be the only setting or these are all the only settings that you would need to do. You will have to change the spacing to make sure that there's no space before or after. Make sure that there's double space and hit OK. Again, you do this one time and uh, you should be set then for the rest of your uh, for the rest of the paper for as long as you are working on this paper. Okay, so I hope that helps. This is how you uh, complete a table of contents. Uh, again, Microsoft Word for um, for the PC will follow very similar steps, but they may be located a little bit different as far as navigating around uh, Word. If anyone has any questions or wants to bring in their document and needs help with uh, setting up a table of contents, feel free to come by and, and talk to me and I'll try to help you out. But uh, try this out on your own uh, because it's good that uh, you know how to do this for other papers that you have to write for, for other uh, e either other classes or other situations. Hope this helps and I look forward to seeing your final uh, document.